So I wanted to go back to something that you mentioned earlier um, when you were talking about um, how you identify very strongly as Palestinian, Palestinian American. Mm -hmm. um, you feel a strong connection to the region as well. The yes. I identify mm -hmm. as Palestinian American rather than Arab American. Yes, I do. Can you just talk more about that and why you feel such a strong connection to the region? Um, like I said previously, because of um, the media here is blocking a lot of stuff and about especially Palestine and the Israel con uh, conflict that's going on there, every time or every chance I have to talk to somebody or to answer a question, I like to tell them I'm Palestinian and um, I love for them to ask me questions and I love to answer questions and show them what Palestinian is. Um, what Jerusalem is, you know, um, and why is all this stuff going on around in, in my country. And I show this um, oh, in my appearance, like I'm not shy to wear my traditional clothing. If I go out, if I go shopping, I'm, I'm fine. Um, I, I see a lot of people ask me uh, why you're wearing this. Or sometimes people will see me wearing stuff like this and they will ask, you know, where is this from? Or, and I will um, happily answer and explain to them, um, um, you know, my country, my origin, um, everything. So. Um, what, you, what is about, um, you mentioned earlier, like with your neighbor, how you kind of had to educate her about yes. the Palestinian-Israel issue. What would you want us to know about that? Like what misconceptions might we have that you might want to um, kind of clear up of that? Basically. Yeah, like as I said in, um, previously, I would love for you guys to to do more research. Uh, check, uh, like get on YouTube, uh, on Facebook, um, get connected with the Middle Eastern um, uh, region and see exactly what's going on. And hear, hear and see what's going on from both sides. You know what I mean? Because there is like a um, big um, community of Israeli people who are, you know, real Jewish and they don't like the killing and all this stuff. Because my neighbor's mom, her mom is Jewish. And she specifically told me, she said, I am Jewish and I believe in Moses, but I don't believe in killing. I don't believe in somebody coming and take my land or my home or my, you know. So I would love for... Um, American people to be more open and educate themselves more. Because like for us, when we come here, we learn, we try to learn everything, you know, about American life, about culture, about schools, about everything. And I'm one of the people that I like to get involved in everything. Like I get involved in my son's school, I participate with BTA. Uh, with my daughter's school, same thing. Um, even in Arabic school, I participate with PTA to have a lot of connection with the kids, with the parents. So um, I would like, I would love for American people to do the same thing. Like get involved with more Arab people, more with more um, uh, Muslim people. Um, we do have um, a lot of Christian people that live in Palestine. And we're like, we lived all our lives with especially like in Ramallah or Bethlehem, we live like family. We are so close. Like there is no difference between, my, between me and my Christian uh, neighbor. We um, go to them for their holidays, for their feasts. They go to us. We had a Christian neighbor that they used to fast with us in Ramallah. I swear they used to fast with us in Ramadan. Or even if they're not fasting, they will never eat or drink in front of us. When they come to visit us, they'll be like, oh, we're, we're fasting like you guys. Mm -hmm. They will celebrate our holiday. They will make um, uh, cookies and stuff for our holiday like it's like their holiday. Same thing with us. When, when it's like a Christmas, we'll go to them, we'll bake them cookies. And I do the same thing with my neighbors too. Like if it's Christmas, I'll make something and I'll send it to them. I'll send them gifts. And they'll do the same thing on my holiday. They'll come, they'll bring me cookies, they'll bring me flour or something to congratulate us with, for our um, holiday. So I've tried to keep uh, like in contact 
with them and let them know, you know, here we are. That's, that's how Muslims are. Muslims are not terrorists. They don't like killing. They like to live in peace. Why do you think we moved and left our countries and moved here? We moved here to live in peace and practice peace. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that there is no bad Muslims. There is a lot of bad people in, 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 in every region. Mm -hmm. There is bad Christian people. There is bad Muslim people. There are bad Jewish people. There is bad people everywhere. But you cannot judge all Muslims because one bad Muslim did something wrong. And that's what's happening, unfortunately, here. When they announced on September 11 that, okay, Osama bin Laden did this. You think all Muslims agreed with that? You think all Muslims like that? No. There was, I, I think, um, I don't remember the number, but there is a lot of Muslim people that got killed that day too. That they worked there and they got killed. Does this mean that, you know, they were also bad? No. So we want American people in the whole world to identify Muslim as a Muslim, as a person of a religion, as a person of peace. We do not believe in, in killing. Our prophet, there is a lot of um, uh, verses in our holy book, a lot of verses from our prophet that says, do not kill. Do not do this. Do not do this. So we don't believe in that. So if somebody, if, if a, a, a one bad guy do, does something, it doesn't mean that, you know, um, all Muslims are bad. And same thing, like there is a lot of like American people that killed tons of Muslim people in their stores, in their places. Like a couple of weeks ago, um, um, two people got killed in Akron. In Akron last year, uh, a Muslim uh, guy, 26 years old, in his pizza shop, somebody walked in, stole the money, and killed him. He died. So does this mean all, the, does this give me the right to say, oh, all American people are bad? Because, you know, this American guy killed a Muslim man. No, I can't judge everybody. And that's, that's the, the, the biggest thing that's going on here that faces all Muslims. You know, that they just think Muslims are terrorists. A lot of people, like nowadays, especially after Trump took over, it's, 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 it's really horrible. Because now, they just say it in front of you, they don't care. They don't care. Like, Tadal Crossing Mall, now, it's not like before, it's totally different. If you walk in, you will see all those like people looking at you different. Um, the other day, one of my friends said she was at Walmart, and a guy approached her and, she, and he said, Oh, what are you doing here? Why, what are you doing here? Why are you, uh, why are you not going back to your country? That's not your country. All this just because she was wearing her hijab and she was shopping. He was like, go back to your country. You're Muslim, you're not supposed to be here. You're a terrorist. Oh, I swear, Walla, she told me yesterday at the um, mosque, she was like, this is what happened with me. And I was like, what did you say? She was like, I didn't say anything. I was like, no, if it was you, I would stop by and say, okay, did I do something bad to you? What did you see from me? Did I approach you? Did I cuss on you? Did I do anything bad to you? Did I misbehave? If I did something of that, you can approach me and say something to me. But as long as I'm behaving myself and I know my rights and I know what to do and I'm following the, 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 the law, there is nothing you can do to me. You know, I'm a, I'm a human being, you're a human being. And everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. You know? So that's one of the things that I would love to see all American people look at it in a different way. Not just what the media is putting in their minds. Because I watch American news every day. I watch Fox, Fox News, I watch Channel 10, I watch CNN, and everything I see it shows that Israeli people are the most innocent people in the world. And Palestinian people, Muslim people are the worst people in the world. They are doing this and they're doing that and they're... That's, that's one of the main things that I would love to see American people more open-minded, doing more research, and talk about it. 
And it's not only me. I, I'm, I'm sure that if you approach any Muslim person and talk to him and ask him any question, he'd be more than happy to, to introduce his, himself and talk to you and give you any information that you want. And they will tell you that we are all against killing and, you know, the killing of all innocent people, that they don't deserve to be, to be dead. So when you come into contact with, like, these negative perceptions in the news or people um, and their ignorance and things mm -hmm. like Walmart or shopping centers, things like that, how do you um, kind of combat that? Like, if they approach you by yourself, or if they approach you with your family, like, how do you? I will stand up for my family, for my beliefs, and I will talk back to them in a nice way. I'm not going to be rude. If they're rude to me, I'm not going to be rude to me. That, because that's not my religion. Even my religion, even my holy book tells me if somebody is being bad or misbehaved to you, you have to treat him with dignity and respect. So I will approach him, I'll explain to him that, you know, I did not do anything bad to, do, to you, and here you go. But if he's one of the people that you cannot even talk to him, I'll probably maybe call 911 for him, but I know that they're not going to do anything. <laughs> but um, that's what I want. That's what I will do. I will stand up for my family. I'll protect myself, my family, in any way I can. So, um, I know you mentioned like you'll wear your traditional clothing and things like that, and that's kind of how you um, stay strong and preserve your culture. Mm -hmm. uh, are there anything in the way to identify? Is there anything else that you need to kind of like in my house, um, like you? As you've seen, it's most traditional. Um, I teach my kids since, I taught them since they were in KG. I taught them the, the language. I'm teaching them the religion. I'm teaching them the holy book. Um, I'm still making all our um, uh, traditional food. Um, I hardly make American food. Um, we always eat, you know, um, Arabic, Palestinian food. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, we pray five times a day. Um, what else? Yeah, everything that we do is based on our culture and the stuff that we uh, that I that, that I was raised of. Same thing. I'm teaching my kids. So has it been hard um, coming to America trying to preserve your culture, or has it been easy for you? Because you just it is. It is. Because I, I see, I do see a lot of people, um, it's really tough on them to, to keep their, you know, um, Muslim um, identity or Arabic um, tradition along with, um, Amer with the American um, life. But I, I think it's not hard. If you try and you keep trying, you can do it. You can do it. Because if you move to live um, in Jordan, or maybe he, you you tried it, and I think you you had a chance to to keep your American style or your American life. But on the other hand, you um, you you got involved with life there. So same same thing here. It doesn't mean like uh, my kids will eat American food. That doesn't mean you know I'm not gonna let them try American food or eat American food. They will. We go to American restaurants. We go to Italian restaurants. But the main thing they know, okay, we, you know, we, we were Arabs, uh, we're Muslims. That's our culture. That's our, um, that's the stuff that we do. That's the stuff we we eat, um, and all this stuff. So, so um, obviously, you are maintaining a lot of Arabic tradition within your family and life, and um, I assume you also integrate within the American culture. So, if we can ask you to. Um, to identify some of the contributions that you have for your community, local community here in Columbus and, and Arab American community and American community in general, what would you say? Okay, for, for, like, for us as, um, um, as an Arabic community um, here, um, first of all, we um, encourage people, uh, especially through uh, the Noor Islamic Center, 
and ICC that we have. It's like uh, one of the um, main um, Islamic centers here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we got involved there. Uh, we, um, we do a lot of um, uh, meetings with uh, senators, with um, uh, people from government. We invite them to the uh, mosque. Uh, they get to meet us. Uh, we do encourage people around um, voting. Uh, we do um, put it, post it on websites and even in the mosque we put flyers. Uh, encourage people to, to vote. Um, teach people uh, about you know, um, uh, the political here in, in the United States um, and teach them how to, to get their choice. You know, how to pick their choice, okay, what this person is doing, what this person is doing, and um, it's up to you. Like, for now, we're waiting for uh, November 6th election, and um, we are, like, listening and uh, teaching ourselves uh, about uh, the divine uh, uh, cordray uh, issue, you know, for a governor. So we're, like, um, showing the Muslim com community what this person want to the community, what's this person want to the community. We get a lot of people come in and talk to, to, to us, in the, uh, especially on Fridays. Friday night they come and they talk, uh, Saturdays. Um, we do have uh, what it's called Islam one-on-one -on, -one on Saturday at NICC, which uh, we have uh, people come um, from like um, schools, uh, churches, um, um, colleges, they come and it's like um, about two hours session. Um, they sit down um, and they have all kind of questions answered. Whatever question they have about Islam, about Arabic, about religion, uh, about the Muslim community, um, um, they're free to come and they are welcome. And um, I want to tell you one incident that it was on, actually it was on Facebook over um, last year around, um, you know, the voting and all this Trump thing. We had a protester. She was from Lancaster. Do you remember, Vanetta? Mm -hmm. She was from Lancaster. And she was one of those, like, um, excuse, my, excuse my language, but she was so aggrant. She hated us so bad. And she stood for about like three hours holding that sign, you remember, mm -hmm. in front of the masjid. Um, and she was like, everybody will pass by her, she will cuss him. She was so bad. We do have an American Muslim lady, and she's very active with the Muslim community. And um, she wears the hijab too. So what she did, she approached that lady. And the, the first thing she told her, she said, can I have a hug? Can I give you a hug? That lady gave her that like weird look. Well, what are you talking about? I'm cussing you and I'm cussing your people. And you want me to give you a hug? So that lady was like, she hesitated for a minute. And then she hugged her and she said, may I welcome you to our center? Why don't you come in for a cup of coffee and some treat? And she was like, no, I'm not. And then she finally got in. She sat down for about two more hours. And she had all kind of questions to us there. She was asking about Muslim people, about Islam, about Arab, and all those kind of questions. She ended up leaving the mosque in tears. She apologized to everybody. And she said, I am so sorry, and I'm so sorry for all my behavior, and I did not know how kind and peaceful you are. And that was something that we were so proud of, because if we left, 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 left her there standing and did not approach her, she could have probably had more people come in and, you know, and at what point, when all those problems started, we had people come and have signs saying, you are our neighbors, we are with you. And that was really heartwarming. You know, when you know, all those things started and they started targeting um, Islamic centers and stuff, they stood around the, the um, NICC holding those signs and that was something big to us. We did appreciate that, we did love those people because we lived with them, you know, we lived. 
I live my whole neighborhood. I have no Muslim people here. All my neighborhood, they're American. All my neighbors, they're American. None of them is Arab. None of them is Muslim. But I have perfect communication, perfect relationship with all of them. Like on um, Halloween, they'll have a party, and they'll invite me, and I'll take my kids and go. Even though they know I don't celebrate Halloween, we don't do anything for Halloween. But because I appreciate my neighbors, I just go and join them for an hour, you know, or so. Just to let them feel, you know, um, you know, you're my neighbors and I appreciate you. I appreciate your holiday, I appreciate what you're doing. You know, I will go. I won't reject it and say, oh, they're American, I don't want to go, I don't want to get involved. I don't celebrate Halloween. Well, my kids know we don't celebrate Halloween. We do not believe in Halloween because it's not in our religion, it's not in our beliefs. But I can't prevent my children to, to, be, to, to participate with their neighbors or with their friends. They know we're not celebrating the holiday, but we're just going out for fun with our neighbors, you know, with our friends. Some people, they don't. Some people, they say, no, I'm not. I don't believe in it. I'm not sending my kids. It's, that's fine. It's up to you. You can do that. But I want to maintain good relationships with my neighbors. Same thing what we do in the North Islamic Center. We're trying to, to maintain um, perfect and good relationships with, with all you know, the neighbors around. Um, as I said, we educate uh, Muslim uh, children um, about Islam, about peace, about the beliefs of us. Um, my son had only like one or two kids in, in the whole school that Muslims. He was like the president, the president of the Muslim holiday in school. He picked that. He told his teacher, okay, we're Muslim. I'm going to be in charge of Muslim holidays to, to teach friends about Muslim holidays. Like last year, he did a project, uh, his social studies uh, teacher, because they learn about Judaism, about Islam, and uh, about all, like the old um, days. Um, and he gave them options for projects like several options. One of the option, uh, options was about our holy book, which is the Quran. So he did that. He chose to did that. I did not force him. I did not ask him to do that. I was like, well, okay, here's your option. What, what do you want to do? He was like, okay, I want to do this. I want to do this project about um, Quran. So he did it. So this way they keep, you know, they're proud. Alhamdulillah, they're proud to be Muslims. They don't shy, they're not shy to say we're, you know, we're Muslims, Americans. Because nobody will recognize my daughter as a Muslim because she's not wearing the hijab yet. But she's proud to say in school and tell her friends, I'm Muslim. You know? Because she's, she's been taught and she was raised to be proud of her identity. Even though she's, okay, she's American. We're proud to be American. We're proud to be, you know, um, holding the um, American passport. We live here. We do our living. It, we cannot deny that. It's a fact. If we didn't live here, God knows what, how, you know, we established life, we established business, we're living a good life, so we do appreciate that. But on the other hand, we do appreciate our religion and our culture, so like all her friends know she's Muslim. She tell them, like, and like when it's lunch, okay, if it's like pizza, pork, okay, I don't eat that. She goes and plays with my, you know, neighbors, and sometimes they do you know, um, the fire and do s'mores. You know what she does? Right away she comes running home because we don't eat pork. And marshmallows have this made of pork. So she runs, she runs home and uh, picks up a bag of um, uh, halal mushrooms, uh, uh, marshmallows and takes it back and part participate with them. You know, she's having fun. But on the other hand, she's not, you know, she's not doing something against her religion, even though she's only 10 years old. Because she's raised that way. And she knows what's, you know, what goes with our religion and what does not go with our religion. She knows what goes with our culture and what does not go with our culture. And um, I'm trying, you know, we're trying our best to do that <laughs> and keep them, you know, educated and um, um, up to, to date and up to time and up to everything with, um, with everything. Thank you very much. This is amazing. <laughs> it's uh, wonderful. Is there anything that we that you wanted us to ask and we haven't asked you? I can't 
guess who did it? I guess you did it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I answered more than you asked me. <laughs> okay, That's thank you very much. Thing. Shukran jazilan. Shukran jazilan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Like I said previously, um, I'm proud to be Arab, but I try my best to say Palestinian because I want everybody know, to know what is Palestine or where is Palestine. Because if we stop saying Palestine, we will look at the map one day and find no Palestine on the map. That's why. But for, to be I'm Arab. And I'm proud to be Arab, and I'm from the Middle East. But on the other hand, I would love to to tell people Palestine because I want everybody to know what is Palestine and where is Palestine. So, do you ever get um, like frustrated or overwhelmed because you feel like you have to be representative for Palestine and representative for the Muslim community? Do you ever get frustrated? Actually, no, no, I'm I'm fine. I get frustrated sometimes when people ask me and say, where are you from? And I say, Palestine uh, or Jerusalem, and they will be like, where is that? That gets me really frustrated because even like I, 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 I agree when I say Palestine, maybe they don't know what Palestine is. But I think everybody in the world should know what, what Jerusalem is. What Jerusalem is, you know? Jerusalem, it's written in, in all the holy books. And you know what I mean? Is there. Yeah, it's written in all.